In this video, we will be working with the nth term test for divergence, which states that if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero, then the series from n equals one to infinity of a sub n diverges. So this means that if the sequence given by a sub n, so this would be our explicit formula, does not converge to zero, if our terms of the sequence are not moving towards zero, then the series is going to diverge, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. The nth term test only tests for divergence, we cannot use the nth term test to prove that a series converges. So you would never say something like this series converges by the nth term test. You would never say that. You would be able to say that a series diverges by the nth term test. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero, so not if it's not equal to zero, but if it is equal to zero, we can't draw any conclusions about whether that, that series is going to converge or diverge. A common mistake is to think that just because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is, e is equal to zero, that means that the series converges, but that's not true. That just means that the nth term test is inconclusive. However, we do know that if the series from n equals one to infinity of a sub n converges, then the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero. Let's take a look at some examples for the, with the nth term test. So here we have the series from n equals one to infinity of four n squared minus three n minus nine over negative n squared plus n. And we're trying to figure out, does this series converge or diverge? So remember, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero, so this is what we would be trying to test, then we can, see, then we can say that our series diverges. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. That would be the limit as n approaches infinity of this right here. Then thinking all the way back to our limit properties from chapter one, if we plug in infinity here, the negative three n and the negative nine are going to become irrelevant because this four n squared is really what's influencing the magnitude of our, of our numerator. And then the negative n squared influences the magnitude of our denominator. So these kind of go away. And then the n squareds would cancel and we would have four over negative one or negative four. Now, negative four is not equal to zero. So in this case, since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero, that means that our series diverges. So our answer with justification would be the series diverges by the nth term test because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero. Let's try another example. This time we're looking to determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals one to infinity of one over n cubed. To test that, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the a sub n portion. And in here, they've plugged in one over n cubed for a sub n. Now, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n cubed, that means that you would have a really, really large number being cubed in the denominator. So this is equal to zero. Now, remember, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero, the nth term test is inconclusive. In future lessons, we'll learn techniques that we can use to figure out the convergence or divergence of a series like this. But for now, with the nth term test, we can't conclude anything. Let's try one more example. We're looking at the series from n equals one to infinity of negative five times two thirds n to the power of n. Now, this looks like a geometric series. If you're familiar with what geometric series look like, we have a times r to the power of n. It doesn't start at zero, but we could work around that if we had to. However, I'm specifically wanting to use the nth term test on this just to demonstrate. So let's take a look and see what information we can get from the nth term test. Let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. If we plug in infinity right here for negative five times two thirds to the power of n, if we take two thirds to the power of infinity, since that number is less than one, we're going to be getting a very, very small number. Five times an extremely small number is gonna get closer and closer to zero. So our limit here is equal to zero. Therefore, the nth term test would be inconclusive because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero. Now, if we were trying to determine whether this series converged or diverged, instead of just looking at some examples of what we can and can't do with the nth term test, what I would do is I would then move on to my test for geometric series. I would actually probably start with geometric series actually. And I would say that because r, which is two thirds, because the absolute value of two thirds is less than one, this series converges. And I could use my other properties from that previous lesson. However, just by using the nth term test, we can't conclude whether the series converges or diverges. Determine the convergence or divergence of each series. Justify your answer. So now we can use the nth term test and we're gonna use the nth term test for a lot of these, but if that doesn't work, we could try using another method. Okay, so for this first one, let's take a look at the nth term test. We would have to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. And in this case, a sub n is three to the power of n plus one over three to the power of n plus one. 
Now, when I copy this over here, instead of writing three to the power of n plus one, I'm going to write that as three to the power of n times three to the power of one, since these two are equivalent. And our, in my denominator, I will leave as three to the power of n plus one. Now, this would be the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of three times three to the power of n in my numerator, three times three to the power of n over three to the power of n plus one in my denominator. Now, one way that you could evaluate this is by using L'Hopital's because, because originally, if you plug in infinity up here and infinity down here, you would get infinity over infinity Then take the derivative of the top and bottom and you could go that route. You can also just think about it though, analytically. So if we plugged in infinity right here, we would have three times three to the power infinity. And we also have a three to the power of infinity down here, but it's just one of them. Now, if we're adding a one to the end, that's really not consequential in the long term. So these two would kind of cancel out and we would be left with just a three. So the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to three. Now, this is not zero. So because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero, that means that this series diverges by the nth term test. There's my response. Determine the convergence or divergence of this series. We have the series from n equals one to infinity of four n over the square root of n squared plus four. First, let's find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, just like we've been doing before. In this case, if we have 4n and then that's over the square root of n squared, and this 4 doesn't really matter if we're plugging in infinity here because a super large number plus 4 is still just a super large number. Here is where we have to think about the magnitude of the numerator in comparison to the magnitude of the denominator. So we have 4n and then the square root of n squared is really just a single 1n. Technically, it's the absolute value of n, but we can just treat it as a 1 here. And then we would take the horizontal asymptote or find the horizontal asymptote of this function. If we have 4n to the power of 1 over 1n to the power of 1, that's just going to be a 4. Therefore, this limit is equal to 4. So since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0, this series diverges by the nth term test. Here's a third example, and we're trying to determine the convergence or divergence of the series and justify our response. We have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the power of n over e to the power of n plus 3. First, let's try finding the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n to see if we can use the nth term test. If we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the power of n over e to the power of n plus 3, 2 to the power of n is not going to grow quite as rapidly as e to the power of n because 2 is less than e. Therefore, as we have n approaching infinity, we're going to be winding up with a larger number in our denominator than the numerator. That means that this would approach 0. So this limit is equal to 0. Now remember, just because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to 0 does not mean that our series converges. It simply means that the nth term test is inconclusive. But I still want to find whether my series is convergent or divergent. Let's try a different method, maybe geometric series. If we take the series from n equals 1 to infinity and we rewrite this a little bit, if we have 2 to the power of n over e to the power of n times e to the power of 3, splitting that denominator apart, then we see that we have 2 to the power of n over e to the power of n. And I'm just going to pull 1 over e cubed off as a coefficient. And I'm left with 2 over e to the power of n because I had 2 to the power of n over e to the power of n. Now, I see that this is in the format of a geometric series. We don't have n starting at zero, but all we really need to look at in order to determine the convergence or divergence of the series is this term right here, the r. Now, if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one, that means that our series is going to diverge. If the absolute value of r is less than one, that means that the series converges. Since the absolute value of two over e is less than one, this particular series is going to converge. We have r is equal to 2 over e. Now keep in mind, e is about 2.7. So 2 over 2.7 is less than 1. Absolute value of 2 over e is less than 1. So the series converges. Let's try another example. We're looking to determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals 1 to infinity of the secant of n. Let's see if we can use the nth term test here. If we try to take the limit as n approaches infinity of that a sub n, well, they've plugged in secant of n for a sub n. So we'll be taking the limit as n approaches infinity of the secant of n. Now, secant is really 1 over cosine, which is going to help us out here. We can take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the cosine of n. 
Now, if we think about what happens if we plug in a really large number right here, remember that cosine is an oscillating function, so it's just going to keep on going up and down. We're not ever going to be approaching a specific value. So if this limit does not exist because the cosine of n we know is just going to keep on alternating, it's not approaching a specific value, that means that it's not equal to zero. If it doesn't exist, it can't be equal to zero. So we'll say that this series diverges by the nth term test because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero. And that would be my response. Which statement correctly identifies and justifies the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals 1 to infinity of e to the power of n plus 2 over 2n cubed? It looks like the reasoning that they are using has to do with the nth term test because I see things being set equal to 0 or not equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. And if that is not equal to 0, that means that my series diverges by the nth term test limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or limit as n approaches infinity of e to the power of n plus 2 over 2n cubed. Now, when I'm actually trying to find what this is, this is probably going to be a L'Hopital's rule problem, because I see that I have infinity on the top, e to the power of infinity plus 2, that's going to be going off to infinity, and then 2n cubed, or 2 infinity cubed, that's also going to be going off to infinity. So because this is a multiple choice, I'm not going to show all of my work, like writing out numerator equals infinity, denominator equals infinity, etc., but I am going to use L'Hopital's right here. So if I take the derivative of my numerator, that's going to be e to the power of n plus 2, but then the derivative of my denominator is going to be 6n squared. That still doesn't help me, because I would still get infinity over infinity. Let's use L'Hopital's rule again. We'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the power of n plus 2. That one is not changing at all. And then that would be over 12n. That still does not help me. I still have infinity over infinity. One more time, we're going to do L'Hopital's rule, and then we will be able to get a conclusive answer. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the power of n plus 2. That one's staying the same always, because e to the x is its own derivative. And then derivative of 12n is just a 12. Now, if we plug in infinity, we have e to the power of infinity plus 2, which is still infinity. e to the power of infinity is infinity over 12. That's still infinity. Therefore, this is equal to infinity. Infinity is not equal to 0. So we see that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0. That means that our series diverges. So I'm going to eliminate choices a and b. The series diverges because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0. Letter c is my correct answer. For which of the following series can the nth term test be used to determine divergence? We have four separate series here. And what it's really asking us is which of these series meets the criteria for the nth term test to conclude that something is divergent. Now remember, in order to determine divergence, we need to have the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n not equaling zero. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of each of these a sub n's and see which of them are not equal to zero. For this first one, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n to the fifth minus 3n cubed over n to the sixth, since I have an n to the sixth in my denominator, but only an n to the fifth in my numerator, the denominator will be growing faster. So I'll have small number over big number. Over time, that's going to get closer and closer to zero. Now, that means since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero, we cannot use the nth term test to determine divergence for number one. Let's try number two, limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n or of e to the power of n plus three over eight n. I think I'm gonna use L'Hopital's rule here. We have limit as n approaches infinity, take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator since both of them are originally approaching infinity. Numerator, we would have e to the power of n plus three. That does not change. Denominator, we would have an eight. Now, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity, plug the infinity right in here, e to the power of infinity is infinity over 8 is still infinity. Since in this case, the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0, we may use the nth term test to determine divergence for number 2. Let's try number 3. The limit as n approaches infinity of 2 times 1 third to the power of n. If we plug in infinity in this case, and we take 1 third to the power of infinity, a fraction that is less than 1 to the power of infinity is getting closer and closer to 0. And we, if we take 2 times 0, that's still just 0. So this one's equal to 0. That means we cannot use the nth term test. Number 4, limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n or of cosine pi n over 4e. 4e is just a number. That is really, really important to keep in mind. 
Now, if we have cosine of pi n or pi times infinity, which is still just infinity, that's going to be an oscillating one because we can't pin down a specific number that it's going to be approaching because cosine is always going up and down. So if we have an oscillating function over 4e, that's still just going to be oscillating. We can't pin it down. However, it's not going to be zero. It's not approaching zero. So I'm just going to say not zero. That means that we can use the nth term test to determine divergence for number four. Therefore, numbers two and four only are the series that we can use the nth term test on to determine that they are divergent. Now, again, this does not mean that series one and three are necessarily convergent. It just means that we would have to use a different test to determine their divergence or convergence.